one is thinking about the beginnings of the Philippian church, it would make good sense that you would turn to Philippians. That's where you're going to find out how the church began. But what happens when you turn to Philippians, you find out absolutely nothing about how the church began. Because this is a letter written by Paul to a congregation, the church in Philippi, after they have had a protracted partnership. Uh, in other words, whether Paul wrote Philippians from Ephesus in the mid-50s or as we think is the case, Roman, from Rome in the early 60s, uh, by this time, a relationship had already been established. Paul wistfully talks about how uh, they had been his partners in the faith from the first day until now. In chapter 4 of Philippians, he alludes to the fact that in the beginning of the gospel, after he left Philippi and went to Thessalonica, that they had sent him aid time and again. So once Philippians is written, a relationship had already been established, and so Paul presupposes the past and does not rehearse it, as he does, for example, in 1 Thessalonians, which was written not long after the founding of the Thessalonian church. So the question remains then, where do we go to find about, out about the beginnings, the origins of the Philippian church? And the answer is Acts, Acts 16. As we study Paul, time and again, we have the opportunity to bring Acts and Paul into conversation. So Acts 16 tells us a number of things. First of all, we learn how Paul uh, brings Timothy uh, into his circle of ministry. In Lystra, Timothy, whose father was Greek and mother was Jew, is taken and, according to Acts, circumcised so that he might join in ministry with Paul. Thereafter, we find the so-called Macedonian vision, where Paul, in a vision, a dream, sees a man from Macedonia saying, come over and help us. And it's at that point then we learn that Paul moves from Troas via the Aegean island called Samothrace to the ancient city known as Neapolis, new city, ironically, contemporary Kavala. Not far from Neapolis lay Philippi, some 10 miles inland. And Luke, in his Acts, tells us what Paul did there. He, Silas, Timothy, go to the place of prayer. There they meet Lydia, a seller of purple goods. And she and her household believe and are baptized. So we now have the beginnings of the Philippian fellowship. In addition to Lydia and her story of coming to faith, a story is told by uh, Acts 16 of a slave girl who has a spirit of, Acts says, the python uh, linked to the Delphic oracle. We see that here is a woman identifying these uh, preachers, Paul and Silas, as servants of the Most High God. After a period of time, uh, Paul sees that she's tormented by the Spirit and exercises the Spirit from her. But her owners are angry because with this exorcism, they lose hope of making profit off of her. And so they take Paul and Silas before the magistrates, and they are beaten with rods, thrown into a prison, and then the third vignette begins. Here we now have Paul and Silas in the prison, singing songs in the midst of the night, and an earthquake comes. At this point, the Philippian jailer rushes in, thinking that his prisoners will take escape. And he asks a question that all Christians who want to bear witness could only hope that would be asked them, Sirs, what must we do to be saved? And Paul responds, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be saved, you and your entire household, and he did, and they did, and they were. Meanwhile, the magistrates are ready to get rid of Paul and Silas and say, send these people on their way, for uh, they're only causing trouble. 
But Paul says, not quite so quickly. Silas and I are Roman citizens. Let the strategoi, let the magistrates come and escort us out of town. And they did, and thereby the beginnings of the Philippian church. But we find it not in Philippians, but in Acts 16.